हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल एंड आई एम बैक विथ अनदर लाइव इंटरव्यू रिकॉर्डिंग फॉर यू गाइस सो दिस इंटरव्यू वेंट वेल बट समथिंग हैपन इन दिस इंटरव्यू एंड आई एम नॉट श्योर वेदर दे विल गोइंग टू कंसिडर मी फॉर फर्दर रोल्स और नॉट बट दिस वुड बी अ ग्रेट ग्रेट लर्निंग फॉर यू गाइज हाउ टू बी कॉन्फिडेंट एंड हाउ टू कम्युनिकेट इफेक्टिवली so watch this entire video and do let me know if you found that particular point where i am still confused if they are going to consider me to shortlist for for the round or not so watch it and share your thoughts in comment am i audible yeah you are audible hello hi just give me a minute i'm setting up the things so uh, akshay right yeah yes yeah. Am I visible? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you are visible. Just give me time of turning on my camera. Am I visible? Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So, how was the day? Yeah, it's going good. It's Friday. It's Friday. Weekend mood? Yeah, it's like it's been uh, gone through things after New Year, so. our sets awesome. for the day so uh, before starting uh, you know the job uh, you you are you have gone through the job description and all the other details that has been shared with you by hr right yeah yeah okay so we'll start our interview mm-hmm. how we'll proceed is uh, first we'll have your introduction short introduction about yourself mm-hmm. and then uh, we'll have some questionnaires on the uh projects that you have done and some few fundamental questions i hope that is fine with you right yeah yeah it's completely fine yeah okay so uh can you quickly introduce yourself uh sure sure so my name is akshay bias i am based out of pune i have completed my bachelor's in electronics and telecommunications engineering in 2015 and it's been around 6 years i am working so i have exposure in the different sectors where like telecom networking and later on i worked as a data analyst in the zensa technology so i got a experience into the e-commerce business over there how it works and at my current workplace i am working in the finance and the banking domain so in the nutshell uh, on day to day basis i do interact with the business stakeholders to understand their exact requirement and uh, based on that requirement whatever necessary steps that needs to be take i figure out and proceeds accordingly um as an example as a data analyst i get a requirement from stakeholders like they have some orders and they are missing out of some orders to fulfill the customers requirement so i first collect all the necessary information and the data from the stakeholder and based on that input i write the sql query to retrieve back end or historical data for the customer and based on that i run cert- certain basic validations whether that orders were valid or not or there were some exception or not like i gone through that process and again i prepare the uh, basic ad hoc report to share with the stakeholder like this is what i have come up with and if you have any additional requirement or query based on my analysis then you can you can explore it so i share my uh, insights to the stakeholders from the data and once the things are finalized then i proceed to create the tableau dashboard on the same data so that they can easily communicate with the end customer and finalize the order so this was the scenario in my last workplace when i was working in the zensar and at my current workplace i specifically um, you know one on one working with the client uh, i'm not working with any team here so my client is looking out for the uh, revenue trend and he is looking out like uh, where we can create the opportunities like they do have one uh, banking system 
and they do online transactions across the globe and generates the revenue out of it so they try to figure out like which are the peak regions where they are getting high revenue and what are the different regions where they still have opportunity to expand their business and implement new business plans so i i help them to monitor the live revenue on live revenue in addition to that historical uh, revenue also like in past year or year over year revenue how much it expanded how much it grown and in future they just predict based on historical data like what will be the figures in upcoming quarters and all so here i work on different tableau dashboards to optimize like they do have some existing dashboards where they come up with the additional requirement like to add additional features to existing dashboard so i do that and uh, on the top of it i also work in back end sql queries like uh, to update some logic in existing sql or to setting up a new flag and creating or implementing a new view for the you know new dashboard so that kind of work i am doing here so yeah this is what i am doing okay so uh, you had mentioned that you have skills on uh, power bi also so you have used power bi or uh, you I just i had uh, learned power bi and uh, not specifically used in on regular basis but one of the pilot project i had worked so later on okay. they switched and they do have plan to move to power bi by considering the uh, maintenance of tableau tableau do have some maintenance and compared to power bi so in upcoming quarter or year they do have plan to migrate entire dashboard to power bi so okay so okay that brings to the next question is yeah. what is the difference between tableau and power bi so as per my current understanding what i figure out is uh, the maintenance cost is power bi having the low maintenance cost compared to tableau and uh, the cloud the power bi also provide the solution on cloud base they, we have the dashboards on cloud so i think tableau doesn't support thoroughly on that uh, I think that is a basic difference I got as of now. There okay. could be different additional things, but I I am still exploring. Yeah, I understand. No, I understand. So, uh, do you have any uh, what I say? As you write, as you mentioned, you are you uh, do write SQL queries, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you have some experience on R or Python? Uh, not on real projects, but I. I did some courses in R and Python for the basic data okay. analysis, like how to use pandas library, numpy library, and how to structure okay. the data frame and visualize the data. So that kind of uh, self experience do I do have, but uh, still I am looking if I can get that in real time projects in companies. Okay. So uh, do you know what are joints? Yeah. Yeah. So. so what are the type of joints uh, around there are four to five types like inner joint left joint right joint outer joint cross joint natural joint and the self joints so these are the basic joints okay so uh tell me one thing you said that you are the one who is who are who's uh, you know gathering the requirement from the customer mm -hmm. right and then you are the one who is preparing the data at the back end and you are the one who is developing the front end dashboard also correct am i correct yeah so uh, to prepare the data at the back end you need some data right you can't prepare everything from your side correct. so what source of data do you have like you have worked on like in the projects that you were mentioning be it um, mm -hmm. in your current role or be it in your previous role with Zensar, what kind of data sets you have worked on uh, it is a structured one because uh, they do have maintained separate teams to maintain the data quality like dba team and all so they have multiple sources in sources uh mm -hmm. where the they are collecting the data and storing at a single place uh, in my project it was the oracle was a centralized place where i used to log into different data warehouses they had been mentioned so i figure out 
the data that stakeholder is looking for is present in which particular data warehouse like where it is coming actually and from that data warehouse uh, what are the relevant tables present and how i can bring that table to a single page like there could be multiple tables and i have to define the relationship between those tables to find out the exact attributes that stakeholder is looking for so based on that i figure out what are the joinings i have to perform between the different tables and i write a you know, sql query from scratch like and based on that i again run a basic validation and share that observations with the stakeholders like like this is what they want or they want something else so sometimes they say keep different attributes also in query maybe they can use that in further enhancement so that kind of changes happen so uh, i just figure out like that way and if something i i got any hurdles or any difficulties then i straightforward work with the dpa team who actually manage that data warehouse or that data okay and uh, so uh, you mentioned relations you have to create relations with uh, different tables or different database right 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 so that we get a meaningful insight so what kind of relations uh, have you used uh, what, what are the types of relation relations as a matter of fact uh primary i look for for the uh, a common attribute or the uh, primary key between uh, two or more table which can give me a meaningful mm -hmm. data uh, as an example okay. uh, let's say i i maintain the currency neutral data set so i look for the tables having the currency code as a common attribute so based on that currency code i can perform the join because the, at the end whatever output i will get it will be more accurate so i just try to figure out whether uh, essential or significant attribute is common between the two or more table or not so based on that i perform the joining okay and uh, so that is to find out the common attribute right but yeah what type like when you have two tables let's say table a table b mm -hmm you have to build a relation between these two tables mm -hmm, right so of course you need a attribute that you mentioned mm -hmm. but what kind of relations can we build between two different tables uh, i didn't get it exactly okay okay uh, so let's say in one table you uh, the attribute that you are looking for for example the currency that you mentioned right uh -huh, yeah. in one table you have uh, unique currencies in one particular column correct but uh, in another table you might have uh, multiple currencies uh, so same currency coming multiple times in a particular column right mm -hmm. for example column Got a it has it. It is one, one, one to many oh. relationship uh, so yeah. how, what type of relationships are there and what makes the difference uh, it is one to many i specifically look for because uh, the currency code is primary key that i specifically look and there is many to many and uh, there mm. could be many to one relationship so yeah. in my scenario i prefer one to many okay yeah so you're right so i will tell you there are four or five types of mm. current uh, to be specific four types of relationship yeah one to one one to many many to one many to many correct okay now what i am looking for is uh, let's say between the two tables you have applied a uh, relationship one to many Mm -hmm. okay and uh, in the same table in another scenario you have applied relationship many to many okay so what would be the difference so in one to many uh, let's say i i will get a number of rows which is high like many rows for example one code and there are three different uh, relationship i found so i will get three records for that particular query in many yeah. to many it will be uh, let's say i have a two attributes or two unique records in one table and uh, three unique records for that respective codes in another table so i will get a uh, two into three around uh, six combinations so that combination will vary okay and uh, what is this uh, 
you have written some tool named as Altrix. Yeah. I'm not, uh, what is that? Uh, actually, it is the uh, ETL tool. It is uh, it is optional tool for the uh, SQL they are using because the people who are not from the uh, technical background more on the front end side so if they want to quickly uh, prepare a data from the server then they can straightforward okay. use this tool so i am using that tool because uh, there was a requirement uh, i we have the hyperion data server and there was no direct connection between hyperion and the tableau so they okay. had an infrastructure design like they had a connector in altrix where they can connect that with Hyperion dataset. So I used Altrix purposely to bring that data from Hyperion environment to Altrix and from Altrix to uh, push that data to the Tableau server as an extract and create the front end dashboard for requirement. So that's why I used I awesome. learned that and I implemented it. It was a new for okay. me. So oh, great. So um, one more thing you mentioned was you are also giving some predictive data to the leaders, mm -hmm. right? Somewhere in the at the time of in giving your introduction, you mentioned that uh, uh, mm -hmm. based on the past data, you are predicting the maybe future sales or something like that, right? So how you are doing that? Uh, actually, I'm creating a year over year model in the dashboard itself, where the business users simply compare the current. Uh, revenue with the past revenue for example uh, January 2023 till in January 2023 how, whatever revenue they got they will compare that with the January 2022 and based on that yeah. figure they will just try to figure out what will be the uh, approximate numbers in January 2024 if they implement or make certain changes into the business strategy so they are using this dashboard to work with the ML ops and uh, different teams. I'm not sure. And they are just predicting, they are reading the matrix out of the dashboard okay. and just predicting the numbers in future. Okay. So basically uh, you are providing the past data yeah. and there's another team who is looking at the past data and predicting something in future, right? Yeah. Yeah. So for them, I'm preparing okay. this particular dashboard. Okay. Okay. Understood. And, uh, so uh, you have mentioned certification of R programming. So what kind of certification you have done? Um, actually, I learned it on Udemy. So in okay. basic data science uh, course I have done in R and Python. So it's been long time, like in 2018 or 19, I, I completed that course. And uh, at that time in lockdown, I just created a capstone project on COVID data set to just see how it regression works in, in that but uh, but with time I, yeah. I i was not able to maintain the practice so but i i can okay. brush up and i can oh. quickly explore it if it's needed okay no that, that's yeah. that's fine what is regression uh regression analysis uh, is like a prediction a kind of prediction based on the current and historical data we define the relation between the two different attributes which changes with time we just try to define a relationship and with that relationship how much uh, how, what we can predict in future that that's it we can see in regression we just define the relationship like between two different attributes uh, we define taste and the uh, taste data set and one more I'm not able to recall it but based on that we prepare a model and if we uh -huh. update a new data on the particular model then what will be the figures will come out that that kind of prediction we do in regression okay okay and then uh, do you know any pipeline modeling in tableau or uh, power bi like since you have learned power bi and you're using tableau so how do you maintain that you know you do something and then you showcase it to the leadership and mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned you are working with the stakeholders right yeah so there won't be any room to make a mistake because you if you if your dashboard is showing some wrong data mm -hmm. uh, leadership won't like it right so how right. do you maintain that uh, quality checking of the data which is coming uh, on the dashboard it is a major part actually so whenever a new requirement come first of all i create a prototype dashboard 
let's say they want a dashboard for entire year but first i create only for one month data so on in that particular prototype i only work on a one month of data i create uh, all visualizations and validate that visualizations and figures with the stakeholder for that particular month only so if that is matching with them, their matrix then i use the entire data for the year and update or create a, another dashboard for entire year so that way it gives me a low burden and low mistakes like eventually to pass out the correct figures because uh, whatever prototype i design and validate if that is passed then only i proceed for the main dashboard so that yeah. is a basic check yeah. and it takes time to validate for them also so that's why i follow right. this process okay no but you have written like uh, something you have written on uh, mm -hmm. that uh, you update modify reports and publish on tableau server and build etl pipeline in eltrix so what is this etl pipeline so yeah it is extract it basic is uh, like extract transform and load so uh -huh. as i said i had requirement where i had to bring the data from hyperion server to the tableau environment uh -huh. so the in hyperion server the data is in cubicle format there is no straightforward tables present over there so i wanted to collect extract all the relevant attributes in uh, altrix so i extracted that and whatever aggregation the business team wanted to perform on that particular columns i perform it mm -hmm. by grouping and making the sum of post based on time frame and then i loaded that to the tableau environment so that way it comes like i built etl pipeline from hyperion to tableau using altrix okay okay yeah, understood uh, it, it can be done in python uh, so i am exploring that part so mm -hmm. i'm not sure how it works in python there was a suggestion in upcoming uh, like to improve that particular feature so mm -hmm. Uh, I'm looking out like how I can do that in Python scripting, in shell scripting. Okay. Okay. And uh, tell me uh, one challenging task like you have been in data analytics for, for three years, four years, if I'm not wrong, 18 yeah. to 22, yeah. four years. Yeah. Right. So, uh, any on for the matter of fact, any prior experience wherein uh, the most challenging task that you have done? The most challenging task in my last workplace, it was uh, actually Cisco yeah. was our client. So they on every quarter, they launch a new uh, campaign and new offers to their existing customers to maintain or to get a good hold for the long time. So what happened? They had launched one offer where the in customer had a flexibility to uh, utilize more licenses beyond their purchase capacity based on the requirement. Uh -huh. So the billing was happened based on the agreement where they had purchased a number of licenses. Uh, as an example, if customer had purchased only 100 licenses, so they will get the billing for 100 licenses at the end of year. But in this new offer, they had flexibility to utilize more licenses if it is required. So customer started using 110, 15 based on the requirement licenses but the issue happened in billing like they got the billing of only 100 licenses so there was a revenue leakage issue and uh, we had identified it but to tackle this it was a huge uh, huge challenge you can say because to understand where the data is storing for the overutilized licenses and figure out how we can bring that data and again compare that data with the customer orders that was a challenging task so we did it it took time but at the end uh, we figure out around 10 to 20 million of revenue we had saved and it is still in progress so that was a challenging part i had faced it was a okay. process oriented yeah. task and uh, <clears throat> in my current workplace also uh, it was a one challenge that i had faced uh, the client had the existing dashboards which was showing the wrong figures because in the client's matrix they had a different region and division grouping of region and division was different but in backend sql script there was a different grouping for region and division uh, for european region 
uh, in back end sweep they had a country wise grouping in european and that country wise grouping was differently grouped in clients matrix so they wanted to update that particular region hierarchy so it was it was challenging for me because i am only one who is directly dealing with client so i had implemented new view from scratch based on the hierarchy list provided by the client so i okay. simply use case statement and decoded all the hierarchy based on the geo hierarchy table we use in sql database so i implemented new view and used that view to perform another joint in existing sql views for the tableau dashboards and created okay. a prototype and shared with the client so currently it is in progress like the client is validating the numbers from his end so if it works well then uh, i can repeat that process or do can do that process for all the tableau dashboards and sql views present with them so okay it is not highly challenging but uh, it took time to analyze and uh, but i enjoyed it's that it's not thing. necessary that you should yeah, it's not necessary that you should have a high challenging task right yeah and no one is prime minister of india that he will have all the high challenging tasks whatever you have worked based on whatever you have experienced and uh, which one uh, any any feedback that you got in your career that you know feedback in the sense of the positive one but the negative one that uh, something is uh, mm -hmm. uh, you have to improve something and yeah. then you did something on that uh, it happened long back when i started working after my graduation like i was in telecom and uh, mm -hmm. i had zero experience like i i didn't know how to work in team so i used to mm -hmm. keep quiet and <laughs> see what all others are doing so others are used to tease like hey, you are doing this wrong or whenever i type any email so the seniors used to you know tell me like you are using incorrect words or wrong grammar so that initial challenges i faced and i overcome with that because eventually with experience we all learn so later on i started exploring how to work with team how to understand the client's requirement basically because later on when i switched to the zensar after my uh, telecom mm -hmm. networking experience so i had a good exposure on how to communicate with the in customer and understand their requirement to think from their point of view not from our point of view so it is not like we are working it is for we are trying to help someone to fix their problems so that kind of approach i i learned in telecom and i applied that mm -hmm. in while working as a data analyst so i didn't work as i okay i have to do this particular task and i have to complete and i have to finish this so mm -hmm. i kept my approach like if someone is coming to me with problem then i have to think their perspective like from their point of view the what is the significance of this problem and how impact it can create if i don't help them so from that point of view mm -hmm. i solve the problem and of course in analysis i do maths and also that is something creative i find i do i never feel like i am doing some job i i i enjoy that work so that that is a main strategy i use or habit i i follow so based on that okay. uh, one one feedback i got from manager like uh, when i was leaving that particular workplace like uh, i am the person who who never said no for uh, any kind of work so that that gives me a motivation in in, in indirectly and yeah that's it it, it is more so like uh, a compliment for me so <laughs> I, I i feel happy while working with that. Yeah, of course it's a compliment so uh it seems like you have prepared a lot of personal dashboards also yeah yeah right so uh can you uh, if it is possible can you share your screen and show me your personal dashboards yeah um, let me like, log in to... i see there's a link yeah. there's a link to your in your yeah i would say by data right sure sure let me open give me a second uh... Yeah, I don't sure, have the link handy with me. So 
actually what i try to do is uh, it is a basic dashboard it, it is not advanced so i just create it and uh, try to uh, share that with the uh, fresher or or college students who are learning so, okay so just give them a Okay. Brief inside, like what kind of work do data analysts do? Okay. And uh, also, it helped me to brush up my existing skills. So. Right. Right. And in the meanwhile, when you are opening, mm -hmm. I see you were uh, you were working in telecom telecom industry, yeah. right? Yeah. Then how did you move to the data analytics? Uh, what made you move yeah so actually i as my engineering background was in telecom like electronics and telecom so i didn't get job in it directly so the first place was telecom i got at least entry somewhere so i entered in telecom mm -hmm. and i found like uh, i am doing all the support oriented stuff like it is mm -hmm. a, it was a good place to work but uh, I didn't find it creative. I was a part of a big cycle and I am just doing my work repeatedly same work. There is no change. So I wanted mm. to do something creative and uh, uh, something energetic or you know, fun work. So I started exploring different job roles like what else I can do. And I came across the uh, data science roles. So what kind of work do data scientists do? And uh, I found okay. it interesting because uh, looking at the raw data, bringing out some meaningful insight, creating visualization and passing out that visualization to some business team to fulfill their business requirement where they can take uh, at least some sort of decision based on the data insight that they get. So I find it creative okay. work. So that's why I switched to, I learned Excel and I started uh, uh, giving interviews. So I got, uh, in 2018, so I got you uh, know job in data. Option of anything. So uh, you know Excel also, right? Yeah. So in Excel, what all things you know? In Excel, like uh, basic formulas, that implement the basic formulas. Uh, pivoting was the major part I used to do and uh, uh, some conditional formatting and that kind of stuff I did in Excel preparing daily monthly VBA? reports. Have you used VBA? I used VBA but I am not uh, familiar with uh, VBA like how to develop it but if it is required I can I can adapt that thing as well. No 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 I, I was not asking from the requirement perspective mm -hmm. I was just asking what all things you have done no worries. Yeah. Uh, still loading of course when it is required we have to learn new things yeah that's how the world works right correct okay let me do one thing i will i will share my screen if yeah, that's it's okay loaded, loaded. actually i was uh, loaded no oh, worries now let Take me share time. my screen mm -hmm. So which college you have passed, you have done your engineering? In CA God Academy of Engineering. CA God Academy of Engineering. It's in CA God? Or CA God College is different, right? In the CA God College. Okay. Okay. Uh, are you able to see my screen? No. Yeah, it's loading. Wait a minute. Yeah, I can see now. Can you go a bit down? Yeah, scroll down. Wait, wait, wait. Let it load. Uh, scroll down. No, wait. Uh, um, which one I was looking for? Just a minute. Let me also see which one was that. The one which I was looking. Yeah, the Boston Housing Prediction. Something there, Boston right? Yeah. Housing. Just <clears throat> this one. The third row. Ah, uh, yeah, this one. Can you open it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
yeah so i see there are three graphs right mm -hmm. one two three graph one table so can you name all these three graph so this one is the uh, scatter plot with the uh, regression line second one is the uh -huh. box plot here i can see the outliers yeah. and the median of the uh, price and uh, bhk i think price versus crime rate okay not it, mm -hmm. uh, yeah it is price versus crime okay. and this yeah. is the uh, donut chart where mm -hmm. the with reference to the uh, crime rate and the uh, yeah it is showing the percent of crime rate in overall data set so when it comes to the box plot which line is called as first quartile or which area is called as first quartile uh i believe this one i i am not prepared but i think it, it's been a long time the first quartile okay maybe this this or this okay I this is a median okay. no i remember and uh, basically we used to find out the out fix the outliers Let's come. How do you decide which one is the outlier? Uh, if this come, let's say this is the box plot, and if the observation is comes beyond this particular line, then it yeah. comes in outlier. But, uh, For example, that, of course, uh, that I can also understand, right? Yeah. But my question was, mm -hmm. uh, you have the same data set, right? Mm -hmm. For every month, you see there is an the target let's say for example in the first line that is the three uh, i see price three price uh, you have 30 as an final line right mm -hmm. yeah but in six you have 20 as a final line so this line will keep on changing the mean and minimum maximum yeah. median and everything keeps on changing so uh, how is that range defined to make anything outlier uh based on the uh median value i think sure and then uh, how, how do we read shatter plot this scatter plot is it's based on yeah. the uh, number of rooms and range of price like in which price mm -hmm. uh, what number of rooms we can get in that uh -huh. for example for this one right. uh, this is around uh, 3 3 or 3.5 bhk and the price is I think that i can understand yeah. Uh, what I'm asking is this you could have made with the bar chart also or with some different chart also. But why did you use scatter plot? Uh, to, to what is see, the benefit of it? To see the price trend with reference to the uh, uh, <clears throat> kind of flat or room. Because uh, mm -hmm. if you see, we, it is divided into two different segments. Here, with reference to price, below 30 lakh, I think below 30 lakh, we have. The, that is you created it right yeah that two colors you have given right yeah okay sure sure no worries i was just asking i was curious because uh somehow i missed to see these dashboards earlier mm -hmm. and while we were having a discussion i understood there's an hyperlink so yeah. i went to this dashboard to ask you some questions no worries yeah, yeah so okay so these are the questions from my side any any questions from your side any questions doubt concerns uh, anything now is your time was like with if i consider this job role then uh, what are the different technologies uh, do you use and uh, exact exact expectations from this particular role i just wanted to understand okay. yep i will give you a brief answer for this mm -hmm. So look, we, we uh, as you understand, the data analytics team directly work with the stakeholders, right? Yeah. So uh, we are a team. Uh, in, uh, it's an organization which is working in various world or various sectors, and we are the data analytics team who analyze the data mm -hmm. from different different sources that Eaton has uh, internally, and uh, then and then. Uh, we provide insights to the leaders. Uh, we provide insight to the stakeholders, to CEO, CTO, all the level of people, based on the data that how the projects are moving, how the business is doing, and a number of data. 
and when it comes to technology we don't use tableau mm -hmm. we are 100 percent using uh, power bi and um, to do and uh, to do some backend work we normally prefer r and python mm -hmm. currently we are not using any sql queries directly mm -hmm. so majorly we use uh, we definitely as you were mentioning that we have to prepare some ad hoc reports right so mm -hmm. Some ad hoc reports will always have to be prepared from different different systems, uh, different different servers, and then once the data is there, then you have to, you are supposed to do some data engineering work in R, Python, and a uh, few more tools, I would say, and then uh, use Power BI to develop the data set. Mm -hmm. And in Power BI, uh, it's not just preparing the graphs because that is I, th I would say that's the most easiest part of power bi but a uh, lot of coding is required a lot of uh, i would say because you get the data but you don't get the insights so mm -hmm. to prepare the insight a lot of um, backend queries or uh, the m code is to be returned measures is to be created and a lot of things is to be done so that we prepare a meaningful insight out of it got you so i hope i could answer your questions yeah yeah it's right. pretty clear to me and uh, also there are some automation pieces also going on so we use power automate power apps mm -hmm. so these are also fields which which need to be taken care of right okay anything else you um, want to know no that is pretty clear and i think it is a challenging role so I will wait for the feedback on. Yeah, yeah. you will definitely yeah. get the feedback. And uh, yeah, but it, oh, it it was easy. I grilled you for 30 minutes, 35 minutes, and you grilled me for only two minutes. That's nice. <laughs> I liked it. Okay. And uh, so to close, before we close this interview, mm -hmm. uh, two questions. Uh, you have been in... Uh, nothing technical now just out of curiosity you've been with your current company for one year as i see yeah right so what's what's uh driving you to move out of that company when you're directly working with stakeholders yeah the primary reason is the they do have the uh, limited set of technology as i said they are mm -hmm. using to sql tableau and they are limited to other technologies so that is a uh, roadblock for me for further growth because i want to mm -hmm. learn more and expand myself and uh, yeah that is a primary reason and second is like uh, it is i'm working in odd time so it's like uh, to attend the meeting okay. in the two in the night sometime or three in the night so that is fine but by considering the further growth i i mm -hmm. decided to so let the work life balance yeah so that is why like okay. it happens everywhere oh, no, no. but uh, really, that's absolutely <laughs> fine don't worry <laughs> but by considering no, the, we don't have any issues about yeah, that so, but, we, but we considering the uh, further growth i think i mm -hmm. i must move out out of this okay sure no issues that was one thing and uh, any hobbies the hobbies is like i i like sketching drawing and uh, recently i started uh, video editing so soon soon coming days are like in tiktok not not on tiktok on on youtube what okay. i am trying to okay. do is to create a tableau courses for the freshers or the college students best out of my experience mm -hmm. so as as you said i have created dashboard so what i am trying to do is collecting the data from the kaggle and uh, create a dashboards out of it and create a mm -hmm. video that by recording the screen create the video and uh, share that with the freshers or the students who need more knowledge or more insight at least from entry level so as a hobby i am awesome. trying to do that thing yeah. awesome awesome that's great and it's always better to give something back to the community right yeah so that is the best thing you can do being an engineer so yeah that's it from my side anything else from your side uh nothing <laughs> i'm 
I don't know like what I will wait for the feedback then then I, it will be a more challenging yeah that is something yeah yeah that, that is some HR job yeah. right so it's I HR's know. headache <laughs> I will connect with HR so sure, don't sure. worry about it okay great it, okay. it was one of the most nice uh, interactive interview yeah. I had attended so very happy like is I it don't know the result but I, I enjoyed this time <laughs> <laughs> okay what was the difference okay uh, like frankly speaking our interviews done but when you said it was the most interactive because, interview uh, so what was the difference <laughs> between the other interviews and this interview uh in other like long back i had uh, attended interview for one of reputed fnc uh, it was pretty straightforward mm -hmm. they ask questions and at the end mm -hmm. they done for the question and they will say we will let you know the feedback that's it there was no two-way communication like the way we are doing it was only one way they are he was asking the question i was answering and once he's done he, he left so that kind okay. of interview i had <laughs> faced majority like but uh, i hope this was better it was much better like that's fine i don't know the results but i enjoyed this interview i am very happy with this like, <laughs> oh, no worry uh, it, it was nice interacting with you uh, let's see if what happens right yeah, yeah sure uh, have a nice day yeah you too have a nice day Good day. Okay. Yep. Bye bye. All right, guys. So this was the interview, and hope you enjoyed it. If you are still watching me till this timeline, then congratulations. Hit a thumbs up button and share this video with the needy one who is preparing for the interview. Share your thoughts in comment section and do subscribe to my channel for more content like this. In addition to this, I am going to share the live Tableau dashboard projects from the Kegel datasets. So stay tuned for more exciting content on this channel.